we've historically used data management platforms like Informatica, Talon, Data Stage, things like that. But now we're seeing more of the data stores, say like Snowflakes, starting to add automated data governance. And they're really pushing that. And on some of the things, in my opinion, things like cataloging, again, and business terms and data dictionary, that's, that's a great step. And it's interesting to see these companies doing this because that part of data governance, I believe, can be fully automated. When we get into data classification and securitization of PII, PCI, PHI, again, I think we need human judgment involved, just like we would with MDM. But I think, to me, I, I see it as the ecosystem is changing. And w today we go to Informatica for data governance. Tomorrow we go to Snowflake. Who knows what we go to five years from now? I, I see it as a an active evolutionary path. I would just add that I think I think a lot of it's going to what's going to happen is the AI capabilities, be it machine learning, be it NLP, be, you know, be it Gen AI, are going to do a great service to lower the lift. So the people that are having to do the mundane things today are able to expedite that. And maybe it's 80 to 80 percent of the work is starting. And they're able to polish that off and do higher value things to drive out great, greater value. So I think it's it's all about lowering lowering the lift and increasing efficiency of of the the, the sharpest, best data mines in our, in our organizations. Well, I'm, I fully agree that uh, the demanding tasks should be automated, and uh, especially. Uh, when we say that uh, there is so much value in data that organizations have. Uh, it, uh, but uh, also the duplication of data is so so huge. So how to find the, the valuable data, not the, the original data, not any copy, uh, just uh, the, the, the data that uh, has value. So I think this, uh, this is the, the area that uh, I, uh, we can see uh, the, well, everybody wants to have a perfect data lineage, but no, nobody wants to do the mapping. Because all the information, uh, how the data uh, went through, uh, is actually hard to collect. <laughs> uh, but if you apply a multimodal approach, you will see that there is some source code. If there is no way to figure out uh, by uh, uh, tracking the, the code that uh, loaded the data, maybe just look for similar data that is so similar that definitely it must be a copy. And the, the more um, information you can put, and ask the AI, okay, uh, does it look like actually this table is a copy of that table? Uh, the more you can build a real data lineage and figure out what is the primary data and what is the secondary data. Mm -hmm. That's actually, uh, that would probably solve a lot of uh, challenges. Yeah. I, I want to add one more area to this discussion so a lot of things that what peter just mentioned and so and other i i feel we are uh, all thinking structured data and copies of data and tables or graphs or documents like document data with like json but there's also some structured data and there's unstructured data so now we are talking about data quality for all of these data types and this is where I feel we are going to go through a whole journey once again because how do you tell what is the quality of uh, data in a PDF document uh, and whether it's ethically correct or not? It is, it's so contextual uh, that, you know, we are going to struggle at this. You know, if I have uh, an agent that goes out and does research for me and uh, summarizes the data and brings it back to me, I need to know the quality of that summary, but I haven't seen the original data. I haven't read a very academic PDF document. And so how in the world am I going to know whether this is high quality or not? And now that data has been created into embeddings. It is sitting in a vector database or my other database. I've got named entities that have been extracted all by LLM. And now I have to apply quality on that. So I'm just curious how this panel is thinking about that? Well, I was working on a project, uh, I think two years ago, when we had to put all uh, documents and uh, build a repository to search for them using uh, contextual search. 
but mm. uh, it was not possible to apply AI because the, the technology was selected. And it was actually a big challenge just to use uh, libraries on the market only to retrieve uh, text and convert PDF files and uh, uh, images, a lot of scans of documents uh, to figure out just the text that you can search for. But actually, when we finished, that was the moment when um, multi-model AI appeared that could actually understand that, uh, well, our approach was just to take, use a library to extract, uh, convert a PDF file to um, a structured format where you have just the texts. But now, actually, if you know that there is a field that says name and there is a text, well, sometimes PDF files have uh, every letter separately written. But uh, Genea actually can read that. So it can go beyond, find this context, understand what it is. And if you ask it to extract entities, it will extract things that we were not able to extract. So that's actually uh, an opportunity to extract uh, um, sense and information from, um, uh, from PDF files or even uh, scans. We had 10 million uh, documents to, to analyze. 